Um, no, today I actually uh, want to tell you a quick story how we at Go Student, we, we raised more than 650 million euros in uh, equity over the course of two years. Um, we became the first European EdTech uh, unicorn um, two years ago. Um, we expanded the business in more than 20 markets. So we came really from this hyper growth phase. And then also, as everyone else was impacted over the past years, shifted to uh, profitability. We came at the peak from a time where we had losses uh, of about 150 million euros. And within two years, we, we are turning that now uh, into a profit. So uh, I want to give you a few insights how we, are, uh, how we are doing that and what we did so far. Just to recap, how are we making money at Go Student? It's very easy. We connect children in the age of 6 to 18 to world-class teachers, and we connect them in different formats. We have one-on-one -on -one online teaching, we have small online group lessons, we have one-to-many offline classes, where also teachers physically teach uh, children in uh, tuition centers, and then we have some hybrid options where kids can either choose uh, between of them or the kids can also use the offline uh, lessons uh, that they can dial in uh, virtually. It's a nice business. It's a 60% uh, gross, profit, uh, uh, gross profit business. The parents pay in monthly installments. One part goes to the teacher and the other part goes to us. We also have, on top of that, a couple of digital services that are currently like education digital services that are currently being used by about 10 million families every year in Europe. It's quite a decent amount of uh, families, um, given that there are only 70 million uh, families uh, in Europe. So we have a decent amount of people that are interacting with one of our services. And then what we do, we direct them to one of our paid uh, tutoring services um, in order to convert them. We started that business model basically 2019, and from 2019 to 2022, we grew that core business, the core online business, to more than 100 million euros in ARR. And as I mentioned uh, before, we also uh, expanded into several countries. Um, we grew our operational base, and that also caused a lot of issues yeah, that we also only later realized. Um, one, of course, operational losses. Yeah? The parents pay monthly installments, uh, so, so we, we also have a certain investment up front. We don't get all the cash of the, of the subscription up front. So there we have some losses. Organizational complexity. Um, we also started to introduce a lot of uh, layers in the business, which were completely unnecessary. And I think in every business today, also the businesses you work into, I would bet that you probably have a couple of uh, layers too much. So really making sure that you have a, a very lean orga, uh, organization. And then also we operated in some markets which were just uh, not, not efficient enough. What we also did in parallel, so we not only expanded the business, the core business to more than 100 million in ARR, we also did four acquisitions. We acquired a school communication business. We acquired the largest uh, marketplace for tutoring services in Europe. We acquired um, a learning and uh, content management system. We acquired the largest player in Germany for offline teaching to really build out this uh, ecosystem to drive uh, traffic and then to start uh, building out synergies. But also, in reality, uh, when, you, when you do such things, uh, you realize it, it's a lot of uh, hard work uh, in order to make those uh, synergies happening. So that created additional, additional complexity. This led to a scenario where then in, in 2022, we had like, uh, losses of about 150 million euros, yeah, which, is, which is, is quite massive. Uh, of course, we also raised a lot, but still, it's massive. So in the first year from uh, 2022 to 2023, we improved that by 100 million by basically doing three things. Uh, first, we had a gross profit, a margin improvement by 10% points. Uh, it's not 10%, it's 10% points. Uh, we did this primarily by pricing. Uh, so pricing was a powerful tool uh, in order to achieve uh, a much better uh, gross profit. 
In some markets, we also had very low prices to scale the services in the beginning. So by, higher, by making the prices higher and uh, uh, better and smarter was a big improvement. Second, closure of non-effective countries. So all the countries that we, that, didn't, that we didn't see a potential, we cut them. Yeah, so this, this were about nine markets. And then also streamlining operations for layoffs. So also um, we, had, uh, we, we cut uh, more than 50% of the, of the people uh, uh, last, uh, last year uh, in, in order to, 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 to streamline that. And we are also continuing to streamlining this uh, organizational structure. For this year, for 23 to 24, we are improving it by another 50 million euros and, and turn this also now in the, in the first half uh, uh, into a cash flow positive uh, business. And it's really, um, what I learned is you need to have very efficient processes, try to have as, as, as actually as not too many people, very lean, and also only have people who can make their hands dirty and who are hardcore executors. You don't need a person in your business that just likes to be a manager and is telling people what to do. You want to have people that are hands-on and they really just execute. Everyone else that is doing something, uh, something different in, in periods like that, where it's like survival of the fittest, you also need to have the best people and the best executors uh, to, make that, uh, to make that work. And I think also for a lot of uh, people that founded their first businesses in those uh, high times, uh, this is also, was also like a, a, re a reality check. Future of education, I see very bright. Um, what is interesting in this industry in which I'm operating, the tutoring industry, um, I don't believe in a purely digital future. So I don't believe that uh, all the kids uh, won't have any social interactions and uh, uh, visit school from home and uh, not have the social interactions. I believe, and I also see this, I'm doing this now for eight years uh, in, the, in the data, if you want to build a large-scale education business, it has to be hybrid. You have to combine online and offline because only by having the offline component, you can also significantly reduce acquisition costs and you can drive local trust, which is the key element for education. You would never send your kid to a kindergarten only because they have a fancy landing page or they have some AI bot that uh, is, is telling you something about the kindergarten. So it's all about local trust, local brands. And combining that with the right digital offer, this is the key to, to build, uh, build uh, large-scale uh, education businesses. So also for us, we, 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 are, we are in this position to further consolidate the markets. So also in the future, we will continue to drive that strategy, what we did with Studienkreis uh, in Germany, buying local brands, consolidating them, and then putting our digital layers on top uh, to accelerate that. Yeah. In that regard, um, it, uh, a very, it was a very exciting, <laughs> very exciting time uh, in, the, in the last two years, from uh, hyper growth um, to, to profitability. I think one topic that will, where we will also see some developments is uh, companies that raised a lot of money, like, like we did, uh, 650 million euros. Um, if they change and adapt to the new reality, I think also in terms of like shareholder structure and governance structure of a company, there will be changes, there will be down rounds, there will be like board changes. So I think we will also see a lot of things happening there uh, uh, next year, which <laughs> I'm, 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 uh, I'm also curious uh, uh, to, to see that. Um, and in that regard, yeah, uh, thank you for, for, for listening to that, that journey.